Hello. Games Workshop has had rat men, lizard men, beast men, and men fish, but one thing it's never had is snake men. Or has it? I'm Jordan, this is Jordan Sorcery, and today we're exploring the history of Chaos Snake Men from Games Workshop. As the Warhammer and 40k worlds began to take a more formal shape in the mid-80s, then owner of Games Workshop Brian Ansell would push his team to design and pitch unique new creatures that could inhabit those spaces. He wanted to set those worlds apart from the burgeoning realms of D&D and other games that were also coming out around the same time. From that period, we would get recurrent oddities like the Fimir and the Zotes, and stalwarts like the Skaven. But we would also see some other stuff as well. And one thing that shone brightly but briefly was the Chaos Snake Men. Are you coiled up comfortably? Then I'll begin. In 1983, the first Citadel Compendium was released by Games Workshop. The Compendiums came as a response to the growing range of Citadel miniatures and the increasing calls for a complete catalogue that gamers and fans could look through so they could see what miniatures were actually available. At the time, it was apparently difficult to take quality photographs that would effectively show the detail and features of the miniatures, so the Compendium project was undertaken to faithfully illustrate every miniature that had been sculpted, released, and was currently available from GW. The compendium included some rules and other ideas too, and is quite a fun read, even if most of the background material would soon be revised and erased. By 1987, they were on the third Citadel compendium, and photography quality and apparently photography department budgets had risen sufficiently to include the majority, though not all, of the Citadel range as photographs. This was where we would get the first tantalising glimpses of those Chaos Snake Men. But where did they come from? Relative newcomer to the GW sculpting team was Charles Chaz Elliott. Elliott had originally joined Games Workshop as a senior graphic designer in 1985, but during his brief tenure with the company, he would work on several sculpting projects as well. Chief amongst them was the Giant Chaos Battering Ram, a monumental ode to the Battering Ram Grond from Lord of the Rings that took Elliot more than 130 hours to sculpt. The assembly instructions would honour the effort by describing it as an Elliot abomination, and what a wonderfully abominable miniature it is. After leaving GW, Elliot would work at many great miniatures companies, and would sculpt iconic villains like the Cthulhu Wars interpretation of the RW Chambers King in Yellow, entangled in a serpentine cloak, and this lovely goblin hero from Ralpartha. The Chaos Battering Ram was not Chaz Elliott's only passion project at Games Workshop though. No, he had even bigger plans. In the late 80s, the full nature of the Warhammer Chaos Gods was still coming together. Beastmen came in all kinds of shapes and sizes. We all remember Slime Arm, and the various factions of Chaos Worshippers were not firmly established yet. It was during this time that Elliot pitched GW on a range of Chaos Snake Men. These sentient creatures, to be known as the Snethen, or the Pure, were the product of a slan breeding mutation gone wrong, abandoning the jungles of Lustria and seeking refuge in the tainted ground beneath the northern wastes. In an interview with the Funky Weenus Rodeo blog, Chaz Elliott said that he liked the idea that his Chaos Barbarian Snake Men could survive in a cold climate despite being cold-blooded because they were just that hard. And he's right, it's cool. Elliott sculpted five Chaos Snake Men for the initial range. These beautifully detailed miniatures are all named, and they include Saranth Elf Mangler, Higat Dwarf Slicer, Sisiron Fangthrain, the indiscriminate Slon Life Smasher, and finally Slurarat Slintered Fang. Unfortunately, although the miniatures were produced, there was never a published set of rules or official background. A Snake Man appeared unremarked upon in this image from the Realm of Chaos Slaves to Darkness book in 1988, and that was it. In more recent times, Wuffrup legend author Graham Davis did prepare 4th edition rules for the Snake Man as a fan project on his blog, which might leave the Snake Man as a forgotten and somewhat lost bit of Warhammer ephemera, except Chaz Elliott's vision for the Chaos Snake Man was eventually to come to pass, at least in a way, when in 2015 he collaborated with sculptors Tim 
Prow and Drew Williams, alongside concept artist Richard Luong, to create a Kickstarter for Die Hard Miniatures, a range of fantasy warriors which would include, that's right, Snake Men. Sculpted by Tim Prow, these Snake Men bear a striking resemblance to the Elliot sculpts of old. And as the Die Hard Miniatures range expanded, more Snake Men waves have since been added. But what of the game's workshop Snake Men? Would we ever sincerely see these serpentine slitherers? Or would they remain spurious speculative stories? Well, join me in the hinterlands of Kuresh. This rarely explored corner of the Warhammer world is nestled by Cathay and Nippon. In Warhammer Forge's Monstrous Arcanum, published in 2012, there is mention of an arcane item by the name of the White Sistrum. The Sistrum is a rattle drum, which creates a terrifying sound, presumably not too much unlike a rattlesnake. This item has found its way from the fetid jungles and deadly wastes of Kuresh, alongside tales told of the Dread Snake Men, and the foul and nightmarish Blood Naga Queens that reside there. Little more is presented about the Snake Men of Kuresh, and we don't know if they share a lineage with the Lizard Men or the Slan, or even if they have a connection to the idea of Snake Men barbarians that Chaz Elliot envisaged. One shared aspect, though, is that Elliot always loved the concept of his Chaos Snake Men riding on the backs of great elemental worms and monsters, and the only other inhabitant of Kuresh that we have yet witnessed in the Warhammer worlds is such a beast. The Dreadmoor is also detailed in Monstrous Arcanum. It is said that whilst Dreadmoors are more often encountered in the Chaos Wastes, they originate in Kuresh, the product of dark rituals performed by the Naga Queens seeking to create a monstrosity that would make it impossible for anyone to travel safely across the lands of the Snake Men. The Dreadmoor is a ferocious tunnelling beast covered in poisonous slime that chews through the earth and bursts from the ground to swallow caravans and great beasts whole. There was another Snake Man, though not from a race of Snake Men. Simply the product of chaos mutation and an abundance of gifts from the Dark Gods. In 1989, Jess Goodwin sculpted a champion of Slanesh that possessed four arms, a human head and torso, and the lower body of a snake. This is an early example of Slanesh's relationship with unsavoury snake types. But it will not be the last. Oh no no no. <laughs> Another old Warhammer faction, the Tomb Kings, featured a few snake men of its own, though not quite the same as those of Elliot's design. These sepulchral stalkers have the body of a snake and the upper torso and head of a human. They're creepy, but these really aren't snake men at all. These are statues given unnatural life by the incantations of Nehekaran Lichmasters. Like the rest of the world that was, these creepy snake statues would crumble into the sands of the end times. In Age of Sigmar, if you face the Daughters of Cain, then you shouldn't be surprised to see more than one slithering snake lady. Made in her own image, the god Marathi created a race of elf and snake warriors known as the Melisai. These fearsome serpentine warriors have been created from the souls of elves that were partially consumed by Slanesh, and they possess a burning hatred for the Chaos God who had tormented them so. In 40k, if you're unlucky, you might encounter not a Chaos Snake Man, but a Slith, a race of serpentine Xenos that typically work for the Drakari. After their planet was destroyed by the Chaos God Slanesh, these four-armed snakes began contracting for the courts of the Archons, where they have proved themselves to be exceptional mercenaries. They share some similarities to a now extinct race, the Lair, a seemingly different race of four-armed snake people who actually worshipped Slanesh, but who suffered the massive inconvenience of being completely wiped out by the Emperor's children during the Great Crusade. It was on Leran, the home planet of the Lair, that Primarch of the Emperor's Children's Legion, Fulgrim, discovered a demon weapon, the Blade of Lair. Unbeknownst to Fulgrim, this mighty sword was home to the spirit of the Chaos Champion of Slanesh, Lucius the Eternal. Lucius possessed Fulgrim for a time, driving him to commit dark acts in service of Chaos. But eventually, Fulgrim was able to wrest back control. Sadly, he had been corrupted by Chaos so fully that he chose to give himself freely to the Ruinous Powers. As a result of his efforts, Fulgrim ascended to Demon Princehood, and his body grew to resemble that of the Lair, the snake race his marines had decimated years earlier. And that is why Fulgrim is now a four-armed purple snake dude. And from outer space to the marginally firmer footing of the Blood Bowl pitch, we find our final Snake Men. In 1987's White Dwarf 86, there is an article introducing the first ever Skaven team, the Skaven Scramblers. In it, we're treated to the history of one of Skaven's greatest players, Tarsh Shorehands. 
a two-headed, four-armed receiver who got into an argument with themselves and strangled each other. That was apparently during a game against a team we would never see. The Snake Men team, known as Shit Lovecraft might want a word. It wouldn't be until July 2022 that we'd finally see a Snake Man slither onto the Blood Bowl pitch, when Amazonian star player Boa Constrictor joined the team. So, I have found Chaos Snake Men, Xenos Snake Men, and Ball Playing Snake Men. But did I miss any? If you have found evidence of serpents somewhere in the Games Workshop world, please leave a comment below. And if you enjoyed this slither through the history of GW, then please like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Jordan, and this is Jordan Sorcery. It's one thing that they never supported the Chaos Snake Men army, but I don't understand why they didn't make an army out of the natural predator of Snake Men. Mongoose Men. Wait, that's just the Death Ferret again.